Coming up, the inside scoop on dating and matchmaking. Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and this is Extraordinary Women TV. My guest today is Carmelia Ray. She is a dating and matchmaking expert, and she's going to be giving us some great tips on the show today. Now, you'll meet her in a moment. Later in the segment, before we take a break, I'll have my regular Good to Know Minute. When I ask my guests for their top success tip, you'll hear Carmelia's. Well, hello there, and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's so nice to have you here. And what a great topic, dating and matchmaking. Yes. Now, tell me, I mean, there are a lot of online websites it seems to be very popular now, um, matchmaking and, and dating online websites. Why is that? Um, why online dating and, and matchmaking? Why is it so popular, yeah. I think that everyday people struggle with finding the right person. And the reason for its popularity is there's just a need. There's lots of singles out there that are trying to look for the right person. And being so busy, having children, not having the right time or resources, this is the reason why people gravitate to other sources. They look for ways to try to find people and that's the popularity and I don't think it's going away. How would you get into the business to begin with? I got into the business about 20 years ago. So in 1990. So you've been doing it a while? I've been doing it for right. a while, yeah. And it just grew with, grew with me. So I pretty much grew up in the dating industry. So, so what was your first job? Were you... Uh... I started in a call center okay, um, for a matchmaking company. So the difference between online and matchmaking is matchmaking is one-on-one. -on -one. So you actually have a conversation with somebody on the phone and you invite them to come in to meet with a relationship consultant. So it's very different than the offline approach. And so you interview them. Or Sorry, the online approach. Yes, we interview them. Right. So my role was to speak to people over the phone that would have these questions about matchmaking. And 20 years ago, there was a lot of stigma about matchmaking. So well, it wasn't still popular. is today still, as well. Very, yeah. Still is, correct. And I started in the call center, and I was booking appointments and screening and qualifying people to come in for matchmaking, and that evolved into a much bigger role down the road. So, yeah, so, and so you're still doing this today. Correct. But you do it for companies. Yes. I do it for companies. Can you exp I, yeah, explain a little bit about uh, what you do. Well, I'm a, I would be a business consultant for the niche dating industry. So all the ins and outs of what a matchmaking business would require are things that I would manage and handle. So it's a lot of fun. Very different. <laughs> now, in, in, you know, you've interviewed um, what was it more than 50,000 people. So you must have a really good sense on what men want and what women want. I think so. So what, have met, what, what has been the trends that you see that men want from women? There's a common trend between what men and women want. Uh, I think the biggest challenge that men have with women, frankly, has been the physical attraction and how over the years that may uh, lose itself because uh, as women, we get busy, and, and this can work for women as well, but we're talking about guys right now. But now are you saying that guys are challenged because it's important to, that they feel attracted to that woman? Absolutely. Okay. Uh, right. That's how it started. Right. And I don't think over the years that they expected their partner to become less attractive. And there are certain things that women do and don't do to hinder that process or to have them become unattractive. And men like to feel wanted and needed as much as women do. So communication is a big uh, reason why a lot of relationships fail. And what about uh, women? I mean, what do women want from men? Women uh, want one. a lot of things from men. <laughs> <laughs> um, but not any different than what men would want. Uh, I think that today's woman wants to be appreciated, respected, recognized for what they contribute. Um, and as women, we also want to be desired. So that's something that women would want from a man. They also traditionally would like to see their partner play the male role, you know, be there, support them. Kill the mouse. Yeah, when absolutely. The mouse, Take right? out the garbage, all those <laughs> things. Now, some women are perfectly capable of doing that, but. You know, that's, I still think it's a man's job. Now, 
what are the men's biggest complaint about women? Uh, men's biggest complaint is nagging. I think that's, that's a nag. big complaint. <laughs> or sweating the small stuff. You know, making little things really big things or complaining. It's not attractive when a man hears somebody. It's not attractive to women either. But I think that's a big complaint that men have. And then women being insecure and jealous of boy time or, or hobbies or interests that they want to pursue. There's a certain amount of, of independence that men need as well in order for them to feel like they can be trusted. So why is this so much of a, a myth or, or rather a stigma around, let's bust that myth, <laughs> yeah. uh, the stigma around um, online dating and, and matchmaking? I mean, what, what's really, I mean, there still is, not maybe to the extent that there once was, mm -hmm. but, but there still is, so why? I think that when it comes to love and romantic love that a lot of my clients share with me that they feel bad that they have to come to a service. They still have this feeling that, you know, they must be some kind of, you know, loser or um, degenerate or desperate. That word comes out. I'm not desperate, but I'm just, you know, I just want some information. And uh, the reason the stigma exists is because we want love to be natural for us. Uh, we want to meet Mr. Right at the grocery store. But today, that's uh, more difficult than ever because we're not always shopping at the grocery store. We don't have a lot of time um, for social activity. So making use of that time and hiring a matchmaker or using a service will help to weed out the fat also because it's about compatibility. So Carmelia, do you, do you think that we have a lot of fantasies about the way things should be then? Sure, we have lots of fantasies about a lot of different things, and romance uh, is not the exception. Right. Um, and so, now I know you've got a book. It's the A to Z Guide, A to Z Guide of Attracting Keeping Your Soulmate. Yes. Uh, what's your book about? Well, over the years, uh, part of my getting to know someone is asking them, what are the things that you're looking for? What's important to you, both men and women? So this book that I compiled is a list of of the top you know 26 or A to Z um, tips or character traits that most people are looking for and this guide is is meant to help somebody who's starting in the process frustrated in the process just have better ways of of getting to the goal of finding the right person now I know you work a lot with people in Toronto uh, and surrounding areas yes um, what do you love the most about what you do? What I love most about what I do is yeah. that it's rewarding to see someone who's been struggling with such an important part of their life and you giving them the opportunity to change it. And the thanks that you get from a couple or a person that says, you know, without your service, without your help, I never would have have met this great guy. The other day I, I got a con uh, testimonial from a lady who said, you know, I'm 47 and I'm having the romance of my life. Beautiful. To read that was just, um, you know, reward to me of the efforts that we do in matchmaking. Now, Carmelia, um, we're going to take a quick break and this is my good to know minute and I know you've got a great success tip. Yes. Um, I always focus on the bigger picture. There's going to be lots of bumps around the road, so keep your a positive attitude and just stay focused on the bigger picture. Well, thanks for that. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more with Carmelia Ray, dating and matchmaking expert. More tips on finding the love of your life. So stay where you are. Welcome back to the show. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with Carmelia Ray, a dating and matchmaking expert uh, here in the studio today. Um, now, law of attraction is something that comes up. I mean, what does law of attraction have to do with the success of a, a relationship? The law of attraction has everything to do with the success of a relationship. It's funny because when I ask people, what are you looking for? A lot of people are more prone to say what they don't want. And what they're really doing is attracting that. So uh, the by, no, by saying, by what, they saying what they don't want. So they're putting they, energy out and that's what comes exactly. back. Exactly. I don't want to meet 
another cheater. I don't want to meet an alcoholic. I don't want to meet a deadbeat. And then what ends up happening is they keep meeting the same types of people by saying what they don't want. Instead, say what you do want. Because those thoughts, you still have that fear that you're going to meet these types of people. So it's really about being conscious constantly about what your thoughts are because those energies vibrate and what you tend to attract are the people that you're looking to avoid. So I know that you have some tips then um, that you would like to share um, on uh, dating and having a successful relationship. And the first um, that we had a chance to speak about earlier. Um, Practice and try to make an effort. What's that about? Well, you can't get what you want if you're not out there. So it's surprising to me how many times I will ask somebody, so what efforts have you made? What have you tried? Nothing. Well, how do you expect to find that person or how do you expect things to change if you're not putting yourself out there? So the first rule, and that's one of my A to Z guides, is D is for dating. You actually have to date to find someone. So, so in other words, if you're a single woman staying in your house all the time, it's not really going to get you very far. No. Is this the idea? Absolutely. Okay. And going to work, and, and we think that we might, again, that romantic idea that by chance, as I'm driving to work, as I'm driving home from work, as I'm going to the bank, as I'm doing my groceries, that I'm going to meet this person. But no, you have to actually date to figure out what you want, what you like, what you don't like, so that you can end up attracting and meeting that person. So. Practice and try, make the effort, because otherwise it's just not going to happen. If, you don't, if you're not moving forward or in a direction, it's not going to happen, absolutely. Um, another one you had was um, to not peg all men into the same box. Now, yes. let's talk about that. I think that when a woman, or a, we're talking about women, when they meet men. Sure, yeah and they feel these romantic feelings, they start to fear that this guy is going to all of a sudden do the same thing that the last guy did. Because these are all the same feelings that you felt when you were in love, when you were infatuated. And so you sabotage yourself by thinking there's something wrong. And So is it natural though for fears to come up? Fear of being hurt, fear of is being abandoned? I mean, this is often what comes up. Yeah, for those are natural things, but then you have to train yourself to not think that way. And that's where the law of attraction comes as well. Because you're struggling with these emotions and thinking that you're going to, this guy is going to be like the last guy. Well, if he's going to be that last guy, you know what? You have no control over that. But you're better off by assuming, and, and, or not assuming, by just going by his actions, by what he says as face value. You have no reason to think that, well, you do have reason to think, but you shouldn't think that way. So do a lot of women sabotage then they're in the early stages of dating the relationships for this reason do you see a lot of that I see a lot of that mm. and those are some of the complaints that men have I did everything right I treated her right I said the right things I bought her gifts all of a sudden she's accusing me of being with someone else or these you know questions come up where were you yesterday and why didn't you call me because I was busy living my life <laughs> so yeah I think that um, sabotage plays a big role. So for women out there, you know, don't assume that this great guy is going to turn into Mr. Wrong. Maybe he's just a great guy. Okay, so l third, have fun. I mean, Absolutely. how important is, is that? Having fun has everything to do with it. And learning from every date, and that comes with the practice, Instead of looking at what went wrong, think about what you learned. Obviously, this is somebody that you don't like for these reasons. Maybe, um, you know, the person arrived late or whatever uncontrollable circumstance happened, just have fun with it. You know, just relax, have fun, roll with it, and that's the best way for you to really get over a pretty challenging situation. It's not always fun, but have as much fun as you can. Do you... Um can you think of one uh, amazing couple, you don't have to, of course, share any names, sure. that uh, stand out in your mind as a couple that you help to match make? And you know, what's really... Um, they've been happy ever after. Yes. Uh, I know of quite a few, but really, uh, I love seeing the older couples that get together. A uh, 75-year-old man and a 69-year-old woman who send a letter saying we've moved in together. 
I love those stories because love can happen at any stage, at any age. And I think the other ones are the really challenging people, the ones that come in with this attitude that you're not going to help me and you won't find me anyone. And all of a sudden, when we don't hear from them, we wonder, I wonder what happened to so-and-so. And you call, well, oh, by the way, I met someone. So those are the people that really stand out in my mind. Now, extramarital affairs um, is, you know, big news these days in, in the media um, with high profile cases. Uh, you know, what do you have to, what's your, your view on, on, um, on these kinds of relationships? I mean, what would you say to a woman if she is uh, having an affair, either she's having an affair or, or her partner is? Well, if there's, there's suspicion and there's actuality, um, I generally p deal with singles that are already single and not in that situation. Um, so I don't condone cheating. It's not something that uh, I think is acceptable in a relationship, and it's really challenging to get over that. So what I would say to somebody who's in a marriage or committed relationship and they find their partner cheating, uh, it depends. Do they want to salvage that relationship? Is it worth salvaging? How do they feel about themselves? Can they really you know, work through this as a couple? Or is it uh, you know, time to really say, you know, I don't deserve that and I need to move forward and be with somebody that wants to be with me? So does it come from a place of, with, with any kind of relationship then, um, whether you're single or whether you're in dating or whether you're in a relationship, committed relationship or married, um, does it, what, how important is it to really, really like who you are? I think my best advice or dating tip that I could offer yeah. somebody is don't start dating or going out there if you don't like yourself. Because so work on yourself first? Absolutely. Right. Work on yourself first. Uh, we. In matchmaking, we screen for those things. We screen for emotional stability, financial stability, if they're looking for a long-term relationship. Whereas when you're online, if you've got an email address, you can join, regardless of if you're married, if you're in a situation, whether you're a jerk or you can just join that service. Um, it's different in matchmaking. So for you going forward, what? Uh what are your plans going forward in your career? Well, my plan is just to continue staying in the business. I'm working on a number of projects with companies. I'm organizing an internet dating conference coming up in Las Vegas in January. Oh, exciting. I have a dating in Las Vegas. Yes, dating in Las Vegas. The internet dating conference is the largest industry conference and social media conference. I'm coming out with a number of products and books and tips for singles out there, so look out for them. Well, you know, Carmelia, I've really enjoyed um, this time with you. Thank um, you. We have a, a last a minute. If, if you have anything else that you wanted to add, a piece of advice or anything that you wanted to share, you can go right ahead. I, I just want to thank you for the opportunity of being here. Oh, I think thanks. that uh, dating and matchmaking is a struggle for a lot of people, but just like anything in life, and if you want to be successful, you take positive steps toward that, you don't let things discourage you, and you keep trying. Well, Carmelia Ray, I have really enjoyed this time, and I wish you all the best in, in dating and matchmaking Thank world you. that you live in. Thank you. I've been speaking with Carmelia Ray. She is a dating and matchmaking expert. Uh, you can find out more information about her uh, on my website at extraordinarywomentv.com, and a link to her website will be there as well. Well. If you are interested in transforming your life, I hope these stories inspire you. You've been watching Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner. See you soon. And of course, if you're interested in finding out about past guests, or more information about the show, I do encourage you to visit the website. Again, extraordinarywomentv.com. And you can reach me through that URL as well. See you soon. <laughs>